What's up, guys? It's your boy David Fabre. I'm gonna rant for another 15 or 30 hours about something that's completely relevant to your interests, but. Fuck. I just gotta let it go, oh, man. I need an outlet. Well, no, I don't really need an outlet. The world is my fucking outlet, and there's nothing the planet can fucking say about it for a while, but whatever. We got a bunch of wrestlers now, and TNA, and ROH, and especially in the WWE, who can sell shirts, they can sell merchandise, but they can't sell seats for the events they show up in. I mean, Raw pretty okay. Its pay-per-views are okay. People are showing up there. It's not selling out as much as it should, but it happens. People actually show up there. Where, in terms of SmackDown, the attendance for SmackDown is revolting. I mean, what they do is they make sure that people don't see through camera angles all the empty ass seats yet there's like whole rows that are empty because of it that they don't show you but what about TNA I mean they're back to the impact zone and <sighs> as ridiculous as it may be the new sound studio they're in that's half the people, yet I still doubt they can fill all those seats. And what, they need about 700 right now. Before they needed about 1,400, and you were able to pull that shit off. But I saw Bound for Glory, and how, there was like, what, 50 people in there? I say 50, because <laughs> they should be embarrassed. It should be condescending the way I'm putting this out there. You got guys like Kurt Angle. You got guys like Jeff Hardy. You had AJ Styles. You had all of these stars. You still have stars right now. I mean, you have Hardy still in the building. Uh, we're trying to make Magnus into a star because he's British. I mean, you guys have been appealing to your British fan base, which is an avenue that you guys have that the WWF might not have because they don't get the shows for free. And also with SmackDown, you got stars on SmackDown. Cena's back on SmackDown. And I loved Cena's SmackDown days in 02 through 05 where he had a, more of an attitude. He seemed more raw. He seemed more like a competitive up-and-coming star than an over-pushed, I guess you can call it, corporate sell out but now he just seems like a beast in every sense of the word whenever he takes like a guest appearance on Smackdown I remember in 2011 he was actually getting kind of tough for a second when he showed up on Smackdown but now he's on Smackdown again doing his thing over there still not drawing CM Punk Appears regularly on SmackDown. We all know he was a big draw in t-shirts. He actually outdrew John Cena in shirts and in merchandise. He was the cover of WWE 12. Yet he still can't... He can't fulfill a fucking seat. He doesn't have a drawing power for something like SmackDown. Same with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan loves to show up on SmackDown. Hell, even The Rock, the guy that sells out Raws, 
Ken Smith a lot of fucking SmackDown. Well, I don't know what I consider a superstar you should be filling, making the main event star. Have someone that can make a SmackDown have the same mass of people, same volume of people as a Raw. Now that's someone that you should be pushing to the moon. Not these sometimes showing up kind of guys. Not these whack five foot tall wrestlers that they come in with their own fan base and that's why they're over and the bandwagoners kick in. But I take that back. I don't hate CM Punk or Daniel Bryan. I've actually liked Punk since before the pipe bomb bullshit, and I actually don't really. I didn't like Daniel Bryan up until the later portion of 2011. Let's be honest. I thought the guy was not only bland, but he was kind of annoying to me. Like, his presence was disgusting for some reason. There was something off about it. But it made me sick. But yeah, I was still a big... I still liked his wrestling style. I just didn't like him. Well, there's someone else I need to mention, but... Anyway... Y'all, y'all can't fill seats, man. And that goes for TNA, that goes for WWF. I would blame some on ROH and companies of that nature, but they're not meant to fill a certain scale. These are the wrestling in front of 30 people crowds. The only difference is that Ring of Honor should be more concerned with the selling of its pay-per-views, of its recent video on demand. It needs to get out of having a cheap-ass server so that people, its big fan base, can't do anything about it. Because it does have a fan base to draw money from. It's not like Juggalo Championship Wrestling where the fan base really isn't going to be big, so they can go to the website and buy a pay-per-view and watch it. They're just going to see a fixed camera angle for the whole event. Uh, this shit is supposed to be real. Like, 25 different camera angles, little effects here and there, some nice details. And more importantly, it's supposed to have a good server, because there's going to be at least... Hundreds of thousands of people watching. ROH has a big fan base. Yeah, it's a fan base of neckbeard wrestling fans, but it's also a fan base of people that do care about the product to some extent, and they like the stars there. You have AJ Styles, he's back. He just... Him and Roderick Strong fucked up, and now Roderick Strong got his neck... Ruined with a Styles Clash. He kind of gave himself a pile driver away. He sold that. So I don't get about hard sellers. It's one thing to actually act like the move hurts you, but sometimes they're trying to make it seem like the move is killing them. Shit. Anyway, this is Mr. Wonka 7. Judge of Star, not by the merch he sells or the swagger you can give, but by. His ability to generate a crowd. Do they want his swagger? Do they like some aspects of his character? Or do they actually want to show up there when he arrives? Because you're going to have 300, 300 day work schedule in WWE and you're not going to fill some seats. Cut some days if you're not going to have superstars of drawing power. Get rid of some SmackDowns. There's no brand split. Anyway, 
suck my dick.